Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. If you've been watching my channel recently, you've probably spotted my beginner's instructional tutorial series about how to build a new gaming PC for yourself, get it up and running. I started off with a $500 build and a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to put it all together. I followed that up with a $750 build and upgrading the $500 build with new components and making it faster. I also followed that up with comparing those two systems against each other in some benchmark battles, so uh, that was fun too. And then finally, I also did a first five things you should do with a new PC build, kind of taking you from the, the build is constructed stage to the uh, getting the UEFI set up, getting Windows installed, and getting everything configured so it's going to actually work and be a functional computer for you. Today's video is a follow-up to that video, the first five things. I'm doing three additional things that I think you guys should do with a new PC build, and I'm actually gonna start off with an apology because in my first five things video, I kind of did an oversight, a mistake, if you will. I was mistaken about uh, how Windows installation works on a kind of a nitpicky little thing, but uh, I think it's something that bears a little bit of more explanation and correction. But before I get into that, I wanted to point out that for today's video, other than all the stuff that I've talked about in those previous videos that you'll need, such as a computer and a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor and an internet connection, for today's projects, the three things, you will need that Windows 10 USB installer that you made perhaps in the previous video, and then I'm also going to be working with an external drive, which I've also encouraged you guys to get. I actually have an SSD, a one terabyte external connected via a USB 3 adapter, which works because it's really fast, but if you have something like an external mechanical drive or something like that, uh, just make sure that it's sizable enough to store a backup image of uh, the installation of Windows you have, and perhaps even to uh, store up some games, because I'm going to be going into uh, some Steam configuration stuff too. But first, back to that correction of my mistake. Here is the UEFI, as I've already explained. It's a UEFI, not a BIOS, and here is where we went into before to tell the computer to boot not off of the drives that are installed, but to boot off of this uh, Windows 10 USB installer that I made. So I'm going to plug this in right now. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be just uh, recognized immediately, so let me restart really quick uh, and get back into the BIOS so that that uh, USB installer actually is recognized. I'm tapping delete again just as the system boots up to access the BIOS, and there it is. Uh, so now over here on the right side we can see the Windows Boot Manager, and that's what is created when you install Windows 10. It puts a little boot manager onto the BIOS. Uh, we also have the SSD that I installed Windows onto, and then we have two options here for USB. The disk that I just installed, USB disk 2.0 in USB mode, or that same USB disk in UEFI mode. And here's where I made that fundamental mistake as I was uh, setting up Windows before. If you're changing your boot priority, which you can either do directly here in the BIOS and then reboot and save, or you can do what I did before, which was to uh, use the motherboard's boot shortcut key, which happens to be F11 for this motherboard. Other more motherboards have this as well, so I'm tapping F11 right now as the system starts. Uh, but this will allow me to just tell it, hey, just for this one time, go and boot off of something else other than, that, than the SSD, for example. So here's really the correction. Instead of choosing USB like I did without really mentioning it or anything, choose UEFI. That will install in UEFI mode, and it will just do a couple kind of fundamental different things uh, when it actually installs Windows, basically tying in with the UEFI uh, functionality of the motherboard. And what the upshot is here is you're going to get much faster boot times. Um, in fact, this system cut a good five, six, seven seconds off the boot time. It was still booting pretty fast before, it was maybe 15 to 20 seconds. Now it's like 10 to 15, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, once you do that, it will take you back into the standard Windows environment, and from here you can go back to my uh, first five things you should do with a new PC build video and go through the installation just like I told you before. Um, so that is step one. And just in case you guys have already installed Windows and you're thinking to yourself, Paul, you jerk, why didn't you tell me about this the first time? Well, let me show you how you can tell what, uh, what mode you're actually installed in. So now that I am booted back into Windows, I am just going to check out my configuration that the storage is set up in, because uh, this will actually be done automatically. I'm going to right click on this PC and go to manage, by the way. Um, this will be done automatically by the Windows 10 setup, and just by taking a quick glance at this in disk management, you can actually see how it's set up and whether you're in uh, old school BIOS mode 
or updated UEFI mode. And basically the recovery partition right here is what you look at. 450 megabytes is the size that you will see if you're in UEFI, UEFI, UEFI mode. You will also see an additional EFI system partition right there. And then you'll see the remainder of your hard drive, the actual use, usable space on the hard drive or SSD or whatever you're using right there. Uh, if you did not install in EFI mode, you will see a 500 megabyte partition right here and you will not see an EFI system partition. And that's just a quick way to look and check uh, what you're actually set up in. Now, if you did not install in EFI mode, then you're gonna have to go back and reinstall Windows if you really wanna do that. But I would say if you didn't, don't worry about it again, it works just fine. I've used lots of systems in that configuration and really the, the, the fundamental benefit you get is just a few extra seconds faster um, when the system boots up for the first time, which again is nice, but that was just bugging me. It was bugging me so much that as I was installing, I just didn't move that down. Uh, I would like to say one last thank you to anyone who commented in the first five things you should do when installing a new PC build, who said, hey Paul, shouldn't you have chosen the UEFI mode? And I was like, should I have? And then I had to research it and I was, like, I was like, I have been wrong about this. So um, that's part of the fun of making videos about technology on YouTube is eventually you will get something wrong and then people will call you out very quickly on it. But I like being called out because I want to I want to be correct, damn it, about the stuff I'm trying to teach you guys. All right, let's move on to thing number two, which is making a system backup image. I think this is a really useful thing to do for anyone who is installing Windows for the first time simply because if you've been following along with all of these steps that I've been doing for you guys as far as installing Windows, everything from booting off of this drive to plopping Windows onto your SSD or drives that you're booting off of to even the little things you might do with the operating system like uh, changing the folder options so that Windows doesn't hide file extensions, that kind of thing. All of that stuff, if you were to go back, reformat your uh, computer and reinstall Windows again, you'd have to do it again, which isn't a huge deal, but it's just, it's gonna take you time, you know, an hour or two, depending on how uh, particular you are, you are about everything. So what this is gonna do is basically take a snapshot of your system, however you have it set up, and then it will allow you to recover from that snapshot whenever you need to. So, so just click the Windows button, and go up to Backup and Restore. I just searched for Backup. It's called Backup and Restore Windows 7. You'll find this right here. Uh, you will, at this point, want to take your external drive and uh, plug that guy in so that it will be recognized as a device you can back up to. Uh, and then from here, you go over, oops, sorry, that popped up. Go over to Create a System Image. Uh, it will automatically look for the backup devices that you have available. Uh, it sees my single drive that I plugged in right here. That's the only one. It tells you how much is free on it. Uh, and then we're just gonna hit Next. Here, it will uh, tell you the backup location and uh, also tell you that any existing sim system images from this machine might be overwritten. Uh, and it will also tell you what it's backing up, which is those two partitions as well as the C drive, which is what you need. Uh, you can also do an exclusion option here. If you have additional drives plugged in, it will let you exclude them. I don't have anything else connected. So then you just click Start Backup and it will go through and it will create that backup. I already went and did this yesterday. So the backup is actually here in Windows Image Backup folder on this drive and there you can see a couple backups that I've done and now real quickly let's run through actually restoring from this backup after you've created it. So I will take my Windows installer because we're going to boot off of this and use this to uh, do the recovery and plug it back into my computer here at the back and then I will reboot and once again uh, tap the F11 button to get into that uh, boot quick boot environment and tell it to again boot in EFI mode because that's what we want to do. It will go through EFI mode boot operations like you have seen it do before and now instead of clicking install now we're going to move down and click repair your computer in this Windows 10 uh, operating system environment. That will take you to the next page which will give you a few options. We're going to choose troubleshoot and then from there choose system image recovery and again make sure that that uh, external drive wherever you have the image copied to is on there. It will tell you to choose the target operating system. You're going for Windows 10, and then it will scan for the image and it will automatically find it if it's uh, done in the standard way that we have done it just now. From here, you can just click next and bear in mind that if you are restoring this image onto an existing SSD or drive or whatever that's on there, it's gonna delete everything on, on that drive. So bear that in mind. Here, we're gonna do an exclusion and tell it to exclude the uh, USB drive that we're currently booting off of, which is kind of nice. Tell it to format and repartition disks and then go ahead and click next and finish. It will tell you that all disks will be restored and formatted. Hit yes, and this will only take a few minutes. After it finishes, 
you can reboot your system and then everything will be exactly as it was when you created that system image. It's a really convenient way to kind of get your system set up exactly how you want it and then have that backup image there in case something goes wrong. If you get a virus or anything like that, you just up, oh, restore from the image and you're off to the races once again. Let's move on to the third thing though, which I think you guys might find useful. This is Steam Setup, because again, if you're building a gaming PC, you probably want to play games on it, and getting Windows Setup is one thing, but you got to get the games loaded up, and chances are, if you're going to play games on a gaming PC, you're going to be using Steam at some point. Granted, it is not by any means the, the only exclusive game platform for the PC, but it is definitely the most expansive and everything. So go and download the client first, store.steampowered.com is where you get that. Click install Steam, it will download it to the guy. Install Steam now. And you'll run that and it will do automatic updates. I'm also gonna plug in my account and do the automatic account activation, but I won't show you that stuff. I'll be right back in just a second with Steam set up properly. Okay, so I actually reinstalled Steam here just so I could show you guys uh, how this is working. So when you first install Steam, you will have no games. And what I'm going to try to show you guys right now is how to get games onto this computer without having to re-download them again, because games can be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 gigs. Maybe you have uh, like a cap on your bandwidth or something like that and you don't want to re-download them. Maybe you've already downloaded them somewhere else and you just want to play them faster. So popping them onto this system can be, cop can be done via copying them from an older system or something like that. Um, but you have to do it in a specific way uh, and then also setting up additional Steam libraries on the system will allow you to for instance choose when you install a game for the first time I want to install this on the SSD so it loads really fast or I want to install this on the hard drive because I know it's a big game and it's going to take up a lot of space and I want to put it on the two terabyte drive so I won't use up all the space on my SSD. That's the basic decision you might made, might make. So basically we're going to go to settings and that is where we're going to be doing most of this stuff. So first off, let's make uh, a new library on this system. So if we go back to our computer, we can see here the SSD that we've installed Steam onto. Uh, we also have our two terabyte storage drive. I just plugged that back in so it would be recognized again. And uh, again, on my first five things video, I showed you guys how to actually set up that drive so it's accessible as it is right now. I just unplugged my Windows installer because that doesn't need to be there. Uh, and here is my external drive that I have plugged in. This has some games on it, uh, but, but I, so I'll, I'll show you how to set up an external drive to use as a library or also to copy games onto an existing drive. So here, we'll make a new folder and we'll call it games. And then I like to go in there and make a new folder called Steam Library Library because that's the default name that Steam likes to use for its Steam Library. So now that that exists, uh, we will go over here to Downloads on the Steam Settings, choose Steam Library Folders, and we'll see that there is the default one uh, under Program Files. This is on the SSD, the C drive. Uh, that's already there and, and how much space is used. Since we don't have any games installed, then nothing is there. So we click Add a Library Folder, change the drive from our C drive over to our... Uh, uh, so we'll go to the D drive. Uh, we found our Games folder that we put there and choose Steam Library and hit Select. And now we have two library folders here on the C drive and on the D drive. So now if we were to go to install a game, um, it would prompt us and say, where do you want to install it to? And that's where you can make that decision. But let's say we already have a game downloaded somewhere and we want to plop it onto that drive and uh, not worry about downloading it ourselves. So for that, we will go back here. Actually, the first thing we want to do is exit Steam. Close it out of the system tray down there. Uh, let's go into our storage drive and our games folder and our Steam library, and we have it right there. You'll note it makes a Steam apps folder there, and then we're gonna fill that out with a little bit more stuff in just a moment. Let's also go to uh, my external drive here, and again, I, I, I use the same layout here so I know where stuff is. I have a games folder and I have a Steam library in there that will also have Steam apps. And then in there, in the Steam apps folder, there's one called common and then that is where all of your games are. So we're gonna duplicate that folder over here since we don't have any games installed, that common folder hasn't been made, but we can make it. Just make sure you name it common just as the normal one is. And then uh, let's take a game. Let's find a game that's maybe a reasonable size. Let's do Chivalry. So we just take the whole Chivalry folder from here where it was installed before, drag it over there, and we'll wait just a few moments for it to copy. And here's the benefit of having a SSD external drive is it copies it Oh, well, that's not too bad. We're copying it to a mechanical drive, so it's going at about the maximum speed that that mechanical drive can write at. And now Chivalry is copied. 
Okay, so uh, let's just close that out. Let's go back over to Steam, load up again. And from here, Chivalry will not appear as installed. Uh, it's assuming, of course, that you own this game too. Um, you have to own the game. Uh, it's, it doesn't appear as installed, but we can hit install here now. And then we need to pay special attention here to where to install it to. And again, we're going to go back to that D folder that we already did. Because since we put the game here, we want it to try to install there, and then it's going to actually discover stuff. So it will, it will initially start, say, creating stuff, and then it'll be like, oh, discovering. Like, oh, we found the game there. And then it will go through and discover all those files, and then in a few moments it should pop up as being there and available to play. We'll give it a second. Okay, so I had to double check something really quick right there, because I, I was pretty sure that I was doing this properly, and then it went and started to download an update. What I realized is that the version I copied over here of Chivalry uh, is has not been updated in a while. So the one I copied over was like 2.5 or 3 gigs, but the current existing version of Chivalry is 8 gigs. So if you copy a game and it's not up to date, it will recognize the files, but then it will attempt to update that game to whatever the latest version is. So Chivalry in this particular case happens to need an additional 5 gigs of download space. But it is working and it is downloading, and now uh, once that download finishes, this game will be installed on our 2 terabyte drive. I also brought Faster Than Light over here, just because it was fast downloaded, and I wanted to confirm that everything was working properly, and it was. Alright, so let's move on to the next step, which is adding uh, an additional library of something that already exists, which is actually a little bit more simple, um, so that should be easy. We'll again jump over here back to settings, and then we'll go over to downloads, and we'll again hit the Steam library folders. And here's where um, uh, I use a technique very often to take a single drive and move it from computer to c computer and run the games off of that drive. Uh, again, with an external SSD like the one I have, it works really good. But yeah, all I have to do in order to add that additional library is hit add library folder, go to the drive I have uh, the, 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 the games installed onto, which is the F drive in this case. Again, go into games and choose that Steam library folder and hit select. And suddenly I have 14 more games installed. Ta-da! There they are. Uh, with the, then it'll tell you the amount of space and how much space is taken up and all that good stuff. And then we hit, can hit close and OK. And then when we go back to our library, we will see many, many more games that are installed that have been downloaded and are there. And should either be ready to play or often, you know, when you click play on them, they'll have, they might have to do a quick update or something like that. But you will avoid the problem of having to completely re-download the game. Um, and that's going to save you time and hopefully, you know, save you from your bandwidth cap if you happen to be in a situation where you have one of those. But that's all for this video, guys. I really hope it has helped you out a little bit more. Uh, thank you for bearing with me as I have corrected myself, but hopefully added a little bit more useful information to this one as well to make it, uh, well, more useful, I suppose. Anyway, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this. Links to everything I have done as well as the past videos uh, in this tutorial series are down in the description. Uh, thank you all so much for your feedback on this one. I will be back more with more videos very soon, and we'll see you next time.